Hello, boys and girls. It has been a long time since I've seen you, and why is that? Well, life has been very stressful. I'm sure you can relate. Um, I've had to be a responsible adult. I know that that's a strange concept to many of us. Uh, but yeah, I've had to be a responsible adult. I've had to take care of my cats, plural, that's right. Uh, there's a second cat in the mix, another little black cat named Erebus, named after the Greek primordial entity of darkness. Uh, and you put Ash and Erebus together and you get A&E. How about that? Um, but I've had to take care of them. I've had to uh, sell a lot of stuff just to, you know, make ends meet. Uh, so some of the things I'm going to show off here, I've had to sell some of the things that were included in the initial purchases or whatever. Uh, but, you know, it's part of life, it's part of the collector's life, and it's part of what we have to do to stay afloat during pandemic times, is it not? I'm sure many of you can relate, but enough about me, let's get to it. So this, what you're about to see, is spread out over however long it's been since the last video. Uh, I, how long was it? Like a month at least. Um, but anyway, uh, these are gonna be a few, uh... These five here, these are going to be from Second and Charles. This was during one of their uh, their sales of, like, buy five, get five free. And I think I might have actually sold or have lined up to sell some of the free ones that I got to where I can't even remember what they were. But show those off. Show off one Amazon uh, acquisition and then another eBay one. And then we'll get to the main event. So first up, we have... Uh, this is Second and Charles stuff. We have The Girl Next Door, Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door, not the 2004 romantic comedy or whatever. Uh, I've heard that this, I've not watched this yet, uh, but I've heard it's very disturbing and it's based on a real life uh, case, if I recall. Uh, I love the cover, very disturbing there, so can't wait to check that out. And then um, another kind of based on a true story film is Howl uh, with, um, what's his name, James Franco and uh, John Hamm and a bunch of other people. This is from Oscilloscope. Uh, um, I don't recall that many releases that they've done. I'm sure they've done several, but they're like an indie film distributor. This case, I have to say, is kind of beat up, um, but this is kind of a rare film to find, or, or rather less common film to find, all about Allen Ginsberg and his poem that kind of erupted a big freedom of speech, you know, movement in art in the 50s or whatever. Um, interested to dive into that beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, artwork here, I have to say. They really put in a lot of good work on the packaging. I just wish this one was in better condition, but... Again, I'm not, like, you know, rushing to grab this and when it's not on a, you know, good sale price or whatever, so I'll take it as it is. But, yeah, eager to jump into that and um, heard good things about it. And then uh, one of the best films ever made, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This is that kind of hard-to-find, expensive digibook version. I got it for, like, three fifty or something like that. It was unbelievably low price. I was kind of shocked at how low priced it was, because uh, normally this should go for a lot more, but for whatever reason, uh, it was very cheap. And good for it, because I'd been missing this film in my collection for quite some time. And uh, it's just, it's a fantastic film. I mean, what more can you say? I mean, it won Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Those are like the big five. And, uh, the only three films that have won those, the big five, were this one, um, It Happened One Night in 1934, and The Silence of the Lambs in 1991. Those are the only three that won the big five, you know, uh, so kind of a big deal and well-deserved because, again, one of the best films I think I've ever seen. So very glad to have that back in the collection and the cool digibook version of it. And then, uh... This is a film that I know that my girl Karen Gellin really loves, and it's a Michael Haneke uh, film called The Pianist. Uh, gives you pianist envy, let me tell you. Um, and this film I have not seen, but it uh, I know it was a... So it's based on a controversial 1983 novel by Elfride Jel Jelinek. 
uh, which I'm probably mispronouncing. Um, and uh, very eager to dive into this because she recommended it so highly and I've heard good things about it that it's kind of controversial. And I'm all about controversial art uh, around here, so eager to check that out. And I have one very, very, very controversial piece of art uh, that I'll show you in a minute, but it is not part of the Second and Charles uh, pa uh, package deal here. But I do have two superhero films. One very mainstream, Shazam, finally got that in the collection. No slipcover, but I can probably find that fairly easily. I'll have to just track it down. I might do one of those things where I like you know, buy it at uh, Best Buy, take the slipcover off, put it on, and then sell the other one unopened and get or er, uh, return it, you know, because that way you get your money back. Might do that. But uh, yeah, Shazam. I dug this uh, film, one of the better DC Extended Universe offerings. Uh, I would have liked to see uh, them kind of get out of the, oh, isn't it crazy that I'm really a boy and, you know, I am able to, you know, be a superhero, that whole thing, you know, they were really getting, you know, it was basically big, but a superhero version of big, uh, which I know that that's kind of what they sold the movie on, uh, but I was sort of like, okay, we got that, I want to now, for the second one, I want to see them, like, get into full-blown kind of mythological, magical kind of story, uh, which admittedly, you kind of have to do that for the first installment like this, you have to set up the world and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, I enjoyed what I got. Um, Dan, David F. Sandberg, who does some good stuff on his YouTube channel, which I've been introduced to since having seen this and Lights Out, um, he seems like a cool guy. Seems like he kind of demystifies filmmaking, even on a big scale like this. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this film. It helped. They really did a good job of differentiating who Shazam, formerly known as Captain Marvel, they really did a good job of differentiating him from Superman in so many ways. Now, they don't, you know, they, they acknowledge the Superman comparisons, but, like, personality-wise, power-wise, struggle-wise, you know, uh, they do a good job of distinguishing him from uh, Superman. Because, again, he's really Billy Bats in a small child. Um, he's not from Krypton. He doesn't have the, the kryptonite weakness he... Uh, his power to derive from magic, you know, he's got the lightning powers, and actually, depending on who's writing it, Shazam is actually more powerful than Superman, but again, his big weakness is that in terms of his mental acuity and his maturity level, he's still a child, so that's kind of its own set of weaknesses. And then the second superhero film, more independent or more, uh, I think this came from a different country, but I can't remember which country it came from, could be wrong about that. Valentine the Dark Avenger. Uh, admittedly, the slipcover's a little torn there, which I'm not pleased about, but again, it was one of those things I was like, I'm not really going to find this all that easily otherwise, so I might as well jump on it. Put out by Shout Factory, and <clears throat> there we go. It was kind of stuck on the inside. That's what she said. Um, but yeah, Valentine the Dark Avenger. Interested. I, I like seeing what the you know less mainstream community does with the superhero genre. I think that's really exciting stuff. And then, uh, speaking of, uh, Mr. Ash, who I mentioned, look how big he's getting now. Say hi! Um, he's getting very big. He, if you saw the shaved part of his paw there, that's because he had, uh, his, uh, whatever catheter put in when, uh, he got his neutering. So, Anyway, yeah, so that was Erebus under the bed. I saw a black shape under the bed, and I was like, who is that? Ah, it's Erebus. So I mentioned the very, very controversial piece of art that I managed to grab. Uh, this was Amazon used, but it was Todd Salon's Happiness. Uh, only on DVD, no Blu-ray yet, and probably never will, as far as I can tell. Uh, this this edition here, the Lionsgate Signature Series, I had the older version of this, which was put out by, I forget what the other company was, it doesn't matter, I think it's the same release, but neither release was very fancy in terms of their artwork or their packaging or anything, which it's sad because, again, like, I think as a film, I think this is incredibly daring, it's uh, beautifully acted, it's 
very darkly humorous. Uh, you have to have a pretty fucked up sense of humor, like I do, to find this amusing, which I, I do, but it's in a very kind of perverse kind of... Uh, I would call it... The best way I can describe it is that it's very cosmically funny. What does that mean? Well, imagine that you are like a, go a god or like the Greek gods in a way, and you're looking down upon people as... Like I'm thinking Jason the Argonauts, how like people are like a chess, chess pieces on a board or whatever. And it's funny in that sense, in the sense that like you observe all these people and their various struggles and their various challenges in life and just how one by one they don't get what they want and how kind of pathetic their lives are and everything. I think, you know, in a way, the human existence, human existence is very, very tragic, but it's also very funny. But in a, again, if you're if you were to be kind of looking down upon it objectively, you'd be like, oh, this is hysterical because these people are so stupid and so like misguided and all that stuff. And we all are a part of the great human comedy slash human tragedy. Um, but why is this so controversial? Well, it's very bleak. It's very, again, messed up in its humor. Uh, it's the, it's not at all everybody's cup of tea. In fact, it's very far from everybody's cup of tea, I think. Uh, but why is this so controversial? Well, because the character played by um, Dylan Baker, who you may remember as Dr. Kurt Connors in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 and 3, never became the lizard, unfortunately. I know that they were kind of going on that path, but then they averted course after 3. Um, Dylan Baker, he plays a suburban husband who is married and has children and all that stuff, but he's actually... A pedophile that's right and it is not explicit in any kind of way but it does put you in his mindset in a way that I think a lot of people would probably find uncomfortable for obvious reasons and it uh, now it's not ever making the case that what he's doing is good or anything like that it's not doing that at all but Again, it's it's through this very darkly comical lens to where you are disturbed by what you're seeing, but you also see just how kind of pathetic. It's not just that. There's a lot of other like kind of aspects of human perversity and human uh, foibles and things like that that this movie touches on. But again, the way that it handles it is very not for the faint of heart and not for everybody. Um, and there's a reason why this movie was released in a very, very, very limited release. It was released unrated. Uh, there's no rated version of it because they couldn't get a rating and they were just like, screw it, just release it unrated. And, uh, but I mean, I think for what it's trying to be for this kind of extremely dark, uh, kind of movie about human endeavors, you know, about the human experience in its own as dark and twisted and messed up as our human existence is, I think it accomplishes what it sets out to do. But again, it says, uh, you know, mature audiences only there. Yeah, it's this is not for the faint of heart, and I don't think most people can necessarily handle it, despite the fact that, again, it's not overly explicit. Like, you don't expect, like, you know, there's no... I don't think there's any gore in this, as far as I remember. Uh, but there was no, like, you know, you'll see far more explicit, like, violence and stuff, in, and, and even sex in most, uh, a lot of mainstream movies. Uh, but it's just, this gets to the heart of some very uncomfortable subject matter, and it doesn't hold back. Um, but I think for what it's trying to be, I think it does a good job. And then another equally controversial film, Home Alone. What's the up with that? Uh, don't you love the, uh... Gotta love the contrast here, don't you? Isn't that just beautiful? Yeah, I think that's beautiful. Uh, which, you know, Dylan Baker's character would probably be a little too interested in uh, our dear Kevin here, if I had to guess. Uh, but yeah, Home Alone. I did not watch this for the first time until college, and I know we're very out of season here, but I managed to find the Canadian 4K of this, and I was like, I want something... Well, I want it in the collection because, well, it's one of those... You kind of just have to have it, I guess. Uh, and I do want to watch it again. It's been such a long time. I only saw it for the first time in college, and um, and I liked it, you know, but I got it, you know, for a decent deal on on uh, eBay. And I was like, I want a version of it that is different from what most people are going to have, so I snagged the Canadian 4K. And the French title 
translates to mama i miss the plane if i recall or like mommy i miss the plane something like that but yeah so there you go home alone and i just again don't you love this the the how life kind of puts these things into your hands one after the other oh it's beautiful um anyway on to the main event uh, like I said, I've been slowing down my collecting because I've had to be a responsible adult, um, having to take care of two cats and having to take care of myself and try to have a stable future in this, uh, very unstable thing called life. But I did pay my good friend, my good Canadian friend, JDC Outlet, uh, a visit. I did patronize his eBay store, which I will include the link to in the description, and I did pick up a few things for pretty cheap uh, overall, so go ahead and patronize his business, if you will. Oh, I'm going to patronize his business. Yeah, that's that's always such a funny term. But anyway, I got a few things from him, and let's dive into what all those are. So again, these are all the Canadian versions, but there's Dark Shadows trying to complete my Tim Burton collection there. Uh, which I remember liking this okay, but I know that it, uh, you know, the kind of the more comedic touch to it was not accurate to the original show, which the original show was more of like a supernatural soap opera. And I've seen a little bit of the original show. I do, uh, I don't think you can actually watch the entire series because one, there's no like singular box set or si singular streaming source of it anywhere. And two, uh, I think there are a lot of, it's kind of like Doctor Who, there are a lot of episodes that are missing and will never be able to be gotten back, at least as far as I know. Uh, so it's like, I want to be able to like start the beginning and watch them all, but it's like, A, that's difficult to do anyway with the ones that do exist, and B, uh, not all of them can be found anymore, so there you go. And then, uh, what else do I have? Oh yeah, History of Violence. Uh, amazing... Uh, graphic novel adaptation by David Cronenberg there. Uh, absolutely love this film with uh, Viggo Mortensen given one of his best performances I think he's ever given. Uh, one of David Cronenberg's best films and this is the Canadian cover and I like that because that's, if I, as I, if I recall, that's, that's the poster I remember seeing so, you know, I, I thought it was fantastic personally. I, I think if you're going to see, you know, one of my, it's probably one of the, there are a lot of comic book movies that are not superheroes, and this is one of those. This was adapted from a graphic novel, and, you know, it's just a damn good movie. So, you know, if you ever want to have some fun, dive into some of those movies that are adapted from comics, but they are not superhero-related properties. And then, what else do we have? Oh, yeah, we have Prisoners, which I've never seen, but I've heard great things about. Uh, Denis Villeneuve, um, a French director, if I recall, he has since gotten a lot of fans. Uh, he did uh, Arrival and he did Blade Runner uh, 2049, both of which I am sorry to say I still haven't seen. I'm very behind on that sort of stuff. I feel bad. I feel like a bad sci-fi fan. And then here's a very underrated and misunderstood film. Uh, Where the Wild Things Are by Spike Jones, if I recall. Yes, Spike Jones, who did Her and he did Being John Malkovich. He does a lot of like really cerebral, very kind of misunderstood movies. Uh, and this is one of them. This might be his most misunderstood film of all. And you can hear Ashes rum rumbling around in the, the cardboard box. He loves cardboard, uh, as all cats do. Um... Now, this doesn't say it comes with a DVD, so this must have just been shipped in a in a double case, whatever. Um, oh, I think it was the digital copy disc, which that wouldn't really even work anyway, so who cares. Um, but anyway, um, Where the Wild Things Are. I think this is probably one of the most misunderstood movies of relatively recent times. I think that... Uh, I don't know if this... Well, clearly the studio let him put it out this way. I think the public might have wanted something that was more, like, explicitly family-friendly or whatever. Um, and there were versions of this story that were floating around for a long time. 
that were gonna be like fully animated they were gonna uh be more explicitly child friendly or whatever spike jones gets a hold of this thing and he makes what i think is a kind of disturbing movie but a really thought-provoking movie not a kids movie but a movie about childhood itself and how kind of chaotic and difficult to understand the world of adults is when you're a child and how you want to kind of hold on to your childhood but you want to try to understand the world of adults and also understand your own emotions and all these different things that are going on this movie does handle all of that in a very symbolic way and if i recall the original author of the book uh who was that um maurice uh, sendek apparently he was very happy with how this turned out uh so i guess it was closer to his vision and i think if i'm glad that the studio put it out i i can't remember if this did like good business or not i want to say it didn't but i can't remember the exact figure off the top of my head um but i remember that people were audiences for sure were kind of disturbed and off put by it but i do think that for what it was trying to be uh which this is a very kind of i think adult oriented film that just happens to be about childhood itself and just how chaotic and hard to understand it is and how a lot of things can happen that we don't fully understand and i think that's what max was trying to uh get a a handle on with these fuzzy monsters that he meets uh, i think it's definitely worth another look i think that it uh was given an unfair shake by the public because i think they wanted minions or something uh as the public often does because you know the public clearly knows what's best for them right um and then we got another graphic novel adaptation which i this is closer to superhero territory but i think it doesn't quite count but it was wanted uh no 4k of this yet or anything i have never read the original graphic novel by um well who was it mark millar and j g jones uh, i've never read it uh, but i do want to because i i know that mark millar is very kind of he's considered to be kind of nihilistic as a uh, comic book writer um but i will want to dive into it i've heard good things about wanted the graphic novel um but yeah this is uh put out by or is t t i cannot pronounce these names today timor beck mam batov who uh produ who uh, directed it and then we got uh, a history channel uh mini series which i have wanted to dive into texas rising there which is all about texas's uh uh what was this was this about the alum no i think that yeah this was on the uh advent of statehood if i recall uh with texas so this would have been after the santa Ana conflict like you know, remember the alamo and all that it would have been after that but it would have been kind of when texas was on the advent of statehood if i remember correctly um but i am very interested in checking it out because i i like history and i like the history channel so there you go um and then we got uh ninja assassin which was i believe produced by yeah produced by the wachowskis um uh, not directed by them but produced by the wachowskis still not seen this yet i've had it kind of in and out of my collection at various times in different forms someday i'll watch it i just don't know when i i haven't been in a martial arts mood in a long time um but anyway uh what else do we have oh yeah i am gonna sell this uh the da vinci code just because there's a 4k of it i saw this in the theater when it came out and i barely remember it i remember one thing i do remember was all the controversy all the hullabaloo all the you know freaking out about the book and about the movie adaptation and all the you know oh, this is an attack on religion and catholicism specifically and all that stuff the movie came out and did good business, but I remember its popularity was short-lived, and whatever controversy it might have generated leading up to it faded away. As soon as it was actually in theaters, it was, like, done. You know, this thing, the the controversy came and went so fast. It was kind of unbelievable. Um, 
And then another one that I'm going to probably sell just because I have it already is Castaway, but that's, you know, with the French title and all that. I already have Castaway, but the reason why I got it was because these two that I did want, this was like a Tom Hanks four pack, and the only way I could get these two with the slips was to get the other two. So I'll sell those two, but we got Captain Phillips and we got Cloud Atlas. I remember seeing Captain Phillips in the theater and I remembered loving it. Uh, I like Paul Greengrass as a director. He's very like economical. He's very, uh, he's very, just kind of to the point. Not a lot of fluffery or anything like that. He's kind of like the opposite of Tarantino in a way, because like Paul Greengrass is just really like get to the point, uh, get the story moving, keep it moving, keep it interesting. Tarantino's gotten to be very kind of languid and. Easy, easy going to the point of like just get the movie moving already paul greengrass in a way he's a little bit like uh clint eastwood as a director except I'd, I'd argue that paul greengrass is actually even more economical um both of them are not really stylists in like that classical auteur sense uh, they're more just efficient but this is a really darn good one probably uh tom one of tom hanks best performances in a long time and uh, it was the other guy, uh, Barkhad Abdi, if I remember. Uh, he got a Best Supporting Actor nomination and well-deserved because I thought he did an amazing job. Um, and if I recall, weren't the actors that they got to play the Somali Pirates, I think they were actually from Somalia. They were from the area, so there was that authenticity factor, which I really loved. And then one of the most... And to talk about underrated movies, Cloud Atlas, I thought was spectacular. I thought this was, again, very misunderstood, very underappreciated, technically, technically an independent film, uh, released through Warner Brothers, but, like, with a lot of non-studio money behind it, a lot of, like, German money behind it, and, uh, three directors, you know, bo both Wachowskis and, uh, Tom Twyk Twyker, I and probably butchering that again but yeah this is like technically an independent film even though i put that in big quotation marks because it did get mainstream stars it got a big studio release all that stuff but yeah a lot of non-studio money went into this and a lot of just unconventionalness in terms of how it got made and everything but once tom uh hanks signed up then everything else kind of fell into place i know that it took them a while to get financing secured and all that stuff but once Tom Hanks was interested, then the rest of it fell into place. Highly, highly underrated film. Ash is trying to climb my shower curtains back there. Um, highly underrated film. I think very not appreciated in its own time. Hopefully future generations will appreciate it. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I do want to read the book. I know it's the movie structured differently than the book. Um, now this is a film that I already have, uh, I am gonna sell the copy I have because the copy I have is kind of beat up, and because it's missing this, I don't even know what you call this thing, uh, like it just kind of hangs there, it's not even like it's a slip cover because it just kind of hangs there, but it's, it's The Social Network, which, you know, my favorite film of the 21st century by far, uh, I don't think a better film has been made, I think it's just... This this comes about as close to perfect as a film can get, I think, in terms of every every detail. Screenwriting, directing, acting, editing, music, uh, thematic resonance, relevancy, uh, its impact on society, how well it has endured. All those things together, I think it just makes it into such a masterpiece. This is my favorite David Fincher film by far. Probably the best film he's ever done. Um, I got it again just because I was missing this thing, you know, which again, I, I don't even know what you call this thing. Is it a slip cover? Is it a, what is it? I don't know. But I, the other copy I had, I had it since it came out first, the first time back in whatever that would have been early 2011 after its theatrical run. Uh, and it's kind of beat up now, but that's why I got a better copy and I got the cover back and all that stuff because I hated like how this you can't even tell what that is and that I you know I, I was early in my collecting I didn't think about like slip covers and all that stuff um 
And then 2011 film, which I've not seen, but it's uh, Immortals, which was directed by uh, a very underrated, visually stunning director named uh, Tarsim Singh uh, du Duan Dar. Um, I know that, like, professionally, especially, like, during the time of uh, The Cell, where I first encountered him, he did The Cell, he did The Fall, he did... Uh, this movie he did selfless um i first encountered him because of the cell which i really love and i've never seen this film but i know that it is apparently very visually stunning i just remembered never hearing anything about it so i don't know if it's you know if it's bad or if it's whatever but it's got a pre superman Hen henry cavill and it's got a post slumdog millionaire frida pinto and mickey rourke in there and i believe it's about what isn't it greek mythology or romans or something i don't know i really know very little about it but again it was cheap and it had the slip oh yeah speaking of greek uh myths we got uh jercules as our dear hades in uh disney's hercules would say uh but no it's hercules with uh dwayne johnson and this was the uh can't talk about uh, brett ratner anymore and you know good riddance to him i say but um yeah, this was Brett Ratner's Hercules, based on another non-superhero graphic novel, uh, Hercules, the, but it was based on the rad Radical Comics, Hercules, which, it's kind of weird, because if I remember, they did the, the Thracian Wars, is what it was called, if I remember, they put out Radical Comics, like, the whole point of that is that they put out these comics that are essentially, like, almost proof of concept, pitches for what could possibly be uh big movies that cost a lot of money which if i'm being honest that's actually pretty damn smart uh because you get to put it out in a way that is far less expensive you get the brand out there you get it established you get a visual idea of what the thing's gonna look like and then you go and shoot that thing and i mean if you're smart uh like for example like robert rodriguez with sin city uh, you know, you take the comic panels of, say, Sin City, or even, uh, well, no, that was Tyler, uh, that was, uh, Zack Snyder did that with 300, another Frank Miller adaptation. Point is, you take the comic pages, and you adapt those visually, and you've already got your built-in storyboards, pretty much, so you go with that. Um, so to me, it makes a lot of practical sense. I do kind of, I do kind of wonder, like, to what degree, uh, is it necessarily practical, uh, for every movie or every person, probably not all that practical, but point being, smart idea, I think, still haven't watched this yet, but this version I got comes with the booklet and the slip box. I just got the, uh, at one of my uh, family video closing videos, I got a, uh, you know, version of it that was, uh, you know, from one of the family videos that was closing, and I didn't have the slip cover, I didn't have anything fancy, so now, you know, I uh, got this back in a more fancy schmancy, you know, Canadian version of it, eh? Um, and I sold the other one that I had because I was like, screw that. But this is a lot fancier and schmancier, which is what we like around here. Only got a few more. Uh, the film that won, um, whatever her name is, um, Julianne Moore, uh, that won her best actress was still Alice, which I have not seen. Uh, but I got it in the collection because I wanted to see the performance that got her the award. Plus, I think I had this in my collection at some point, but I didn't have it with the slip. So I, you know, I sold the other one. Um, and I believe that the one that I had, I think it was from another uh, Whatchamadoodle uh, family video acquisition. So, you know, kind of upgrading. And then uh, we got Rush, the Ron Howard film with Chris Hemsworth, um, which I have not seen. I need to do more in the way of sports films and stuff. It's funny because I'm not really like a sports person at all. This has got that cool gatefold slip there. Um, not really a sports person in any kind of way. Now, I okay, I, quick thing. I like it when the Canadian... Canadian uh, movies, they tend to get this right, or Canadian editions of movies, they tend to get this right where the slipcover looks different than the normal cover, and so therefore there's a reason for you to keep it and a reason for them to exist and to be special, you know, be different, besides even the reversible French covers there. 
um, you know, they just put in more. They put in more effort. Um, and I just like that you get a couple different options with what all you see. So anyway, yeah, Rush. Uh, I'm not normally a sports person, but out of all the sports out there and, like, the ones that tend to translate well to cinema, um, I tend to think that boxing... Any, any of the fighting sports, boxing, wrestling, uh, sword fighting of any variety, those t tend to translate to cinema very well, as does racing. Racing tends to translate well. <clears throat> I think it's once you get to the ball games that it's like, you know, you can fall into a lot of tropes, or you can come away with a masterpiece like Bull Durham, which I thought was excellent. Um... But, you know, there, there's good films in any genre, but, like, as far as, like, I like the fighting sports, and I like, you know, racing fine, um, and I think, you know, I'll be interested to dive into that. And then, last but not least, we got uh, Mama, which was done by Andy Mus Muschetti, I am probably pronouncing that wrong, but he went on to do It, chapters 1 and 2, which is pretty cool. And this, again, had the cool slip. And uh, I like this film. It was a Guillermo del Toro production, if I remember, or at least executive producer or something. Yeah, executive producer. Um, but yeah, I like this film, Jessica Chastain. A pretty solid uh, horror film. I think it was only like a PG-13 in the United States, and it's a 14 on the Canadian system. But yeah, I like this film. Anyway, fellas uh, and ladies, hopefully uh, this was worth the wait. I know that I haven't been uploading in a long time. It's just life is stressful. Life is hard. Life is, uh, you know, we're still in pandemic times. We're still having to make tough sacrifices. We're still having to take care of four-legged friends and children, all the, you know, your significant other, all that stuff, having to deal with jobs, having to deal with tax season is upon us, you know, all these things, but I'm back for the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'll be uploading whenever I get more stuff to show you. Uh, a lot of stuff is, has come and gone and, you know, it's just the way it is, but that's life, kids. Uh, so check out more videos from this channel and also check out, uh, my other channel, No Money Film School. I'll link that in the description. I'm trying to get that going again. It's just been a difficult uh, few, at least month or however long it's been. It's just been difficult. So I'll try to, you know, persist in spite of all that. If you like this, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, set phasers to stun, warp factor 5, and I'll see you in the next video, whatever that is. Um, and stay tuned on No Money Film School also.